So welcome back to a new Game Stuff episode, and I have quite a few interesting items to show here. I have some stuff hidden in the back here and hidden over here that I don't think I've revealed in the thumbnail, because everybody wants to be surprised. Everybody's like, you showed everything in the thumbnail, don't do that. I'm like, okay, I will hold some things back. We will start off with a phenomenal soundtrack, and I was talking to Alpha Mega Sin the other day about it. I just got this from Data Discs. I'm gonna put this right here. Thunder Force 4. Finally, we get this. And here, this is ridiculous. Here's the uh, the box itself. All the artwork. It is three discs long. This is unreal. And yeah, me and Alpha were talking about this. I'm like, I said, I remember that you really like a Thunder Force game. He's like, I really like Thunder Force 4. I said, so do I. And we agreed that we love it because of the metal soundtrack it is awesome. I'm very partial to Thunder Force 2. That was one of the ones that I first played and I really have a lot of nostalgia for that. But 4 is really good as well. And I you know I always say this. I was like, oh yeah, the music's really good. I'll just play a song right now. That is why I had to get this soundtrack, and I love vinyl records. I love the big artwork, you know, a recreation of the original there. Love it. I think it's just amazing. Now, speaking of amazing, uh, obviously the new Mortal Kombat 11 has come out. I haven't had a chance to check it out or anything like that. But I did order this quite a while ago. Uh, somebody on Twitter mentioned it to me and said, hey, this is coming out. You might probably like this. And I did, and I want to say this about More Combat before I go, because it is the it is the vinyl soundtrack to More Combat One and Two right here. And I I always want to mention something about More Combat is that there's all the different More Combat games over the years, but I am so partial to One and Two. One I saw in the arcade, I was completely blown away by it. I it wasn't for me. I'm always been a Street Fighter guy, and then More Combat Two came on the Super Nintendo. That's where I first played it. it. Came in the arcade, obviously, but I played on the Super Nintendo and I fell in love with the game. And I got a lot to admit, I'm terrible at Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty good at Street Fighter, but Mortal Kombat, I've just never really gotten with the program. I, I could never pull off my fatalities when I wanted to. I was always a very frustrated Mortal Kombat player. But what I will say is, I love the world building. I love the characters. I love the music. That's why I got the soundtrack. I really like it for 1 and 2. It brings me back to when I was 20 years old when Mortal Kombat 2 first came out, which is 25 years ago, which is hard to believe, but when I heard there's a soundtrack, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely in. Now, this is a new Game Stuff episode, but what I'm going to show is an old game that uh, I got signed, and this is kind of cool. And this is by, the, I got it signed by the head of Coalition Games, Rod Ferguson, right here. He signed my Gears of War game, and I was so thrilled to get that, but that's not all. Like, the, what happened is Vic had him on the show, and I went down just to get him to sign things. And we have a, a SkyTrain uh, system here uh, that kind of runs from here to downtown and stuff like that. So I lugged this all the way in the SkyTrain, my Lancer, just so he could sign it right there. And he signed it right there. I'm really happy to get that signed and I I got this Lancer a lot of people have asked me about this this is a I might as well just mention this how did I get this I got this at an auction at a retro gaming expo and the thing is is the the auction was late at night so they put this up for a hundred dollars and I was the only person who bid on it it should have gone higher I won this like I don't even know how many it's like six seven years ago now uh, I was so thrilled to get it and now to have it signed by you know the head of Gears of War is pretty cool. That makes this a priceless item and nothing I would ever sell. It just really means something to me. And I've never mentioned it is that I really like, especially the original Gears of War. I remember playing it all the time with friends at work and you know, it would be late at night, we'd get off work and we all would get together online and play Gears of War. Love this so much. Okay, and so now we get into some other games I, I picked up. I, I got this off Craigslist for $10. 
And I was doing some uh, looking around. I'm like, I really want to pick this game up uh, on the Xbox uh, 360 Transformers Fall of Cybertron. This was one of the games I was missing and I was like, I really, I want to see if it's on Craigslist. And I was like, oh, it is. So I drove over to this person's house and they had it. And I was like, hey, thanks, here's 10 bucks. I mean, what a steal. What a steal. I love um, this universe of the Transformers. I love it that it all takes place in Cybertron. And it's all the Cybertronian transformations and uh, the vehicles and, and weapon systems and all that is for Cybertron alone. And I, I, I love the original game of this. And I, it was just one of those things. I'm like, I just want to pick it up. And I did. I got it for a really good price. Check out Craigslist. I'm not advertising Craigslist, but, you know, it's a good place to find uh, video games on. Okay, they sent me a code for this, and I never got around to reviewing it, unfortunately, because I was so busy with a, a lot of other things that were going on in my life, but I definitely wanted to mention it. Uh, they also sent me a physical copy of this game here, and Kim was playing it, and it's Remy Lore by Nicholas. And I just want to talk about this uh, briefly because I haven't had a chance to talk about it. Kim started to play it. We were all ready to review it, but so many other things happened in our lives. What is it? It's kind of a roguelike action hack and slash game where you get a lot of loot. You're trying to find better weapons. You're fighting a lot of different enemies and you're trying to get really good ranks on each of the levels and all that. So how is it? It's okay. It's not bad. If I was to give it a rating, it would be like a 6.57 out of 10. It's a little bit of fun. Kim found that it was very repetitive, and it is. You're just fighting the same kind of enemies over and over, and collecting loot over and over. And in a lot of games, that works really, really well. In this game, it works okay-ish. Uh, it kind of wears its welcome out very fast. But it's beautifully, uh, you know, styled. The graphics are really good. I, obviously, I always lean to the anime style of graphics, so that's very pleasing. The music is fine. Sound effects are fine. I think it's an okay game. And I, I like Nicholas as a company. They've released a lot of things that I really, really like, like Code of Princess and things like that. So uh, it's, a, it's a cool thing. I'm, I'm glad they sent me uh, a code. I got to ch check it out. And I, I got a physical copy uh, as well, so I'm happy. All right, now we get into some limited run games. Man, and I know, I know some people that get every single limited run game. I'm like, how do you do it? Like, and also, I'm very picky and choosy about what I get from limited run. So I get maybe around four or five games a year. I think I got two of them already here. Uh, one of them here, this, I saw this and I was like, I gotta get this. And it's Dragon Slayer, the trilogy. This brings me back to being a really young kid playing Dragon Slayer, and there's Dragon Slayer and higher here, uh, Space Ace and Dragon Slayer 2. And I just remember marveling at this technology where it was kind of a laserdisc based game. It was pu purely animated, and you'd make decisions about where you want to go, and you had to do it on the fly, and you had to make the right decision or you would die. And uh, I was no good at playing the game. I would always end up as a pile of bones but I really love the art style. I really love the animation. I think this is one of the things that got me into, you know, really good animation and studying animation. And this, this is one thing I've always come back to. And I love the character. I love the time period of this game. It really, I don't know, it's a real time capsule for me. As, as I think it is for a lot of you watching who are older, that were there in the arcades, that were playing Dragon's Lair back then, and we were all young kids marveling going, Oh my God, look at the animation. Is this Disney? You know, because uh, the animation, again, was so incredible. And so I picked this up from Limited Run Games and I don't think I'm going to open it up or anything like that. I'm just going to keep it sealed. Sealed. I usually do that with Limited Run. I'm getting it for the collectability where a lot of the other games I get is I just, I just dive into to, to play them. Where a lot of them, I, you know, I played them before. And the collectability thing is for me. Okay. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse on the Nintendo Switch by Limited Run. A port of the uh, 3DS game, I had to get this. I'm a huge Shantae fan, and I only played it a couple of years ago, and I'm like, how did I miss this series? How have I been so out of the loop? And so I've quickly got myself back into the loop in the last couple of years. I played all of the games, and I had to get this. And it's so weird, some of the Limited Run PS4 versions of these games, uh, you know, are like, 
are sold out and are super expensive. I'm like, whoa, like Shantae items really go up in price. And you know with me, I don't buy these games for monetary value. I, I never end up you know selling them again. They're all for me personally. Uh, but I, I have noticed, and I do pay attention to prices out there, and I have noticed that Shantae just keeps going up through the roof. It's, it's pretty wild. Okay, a couple of things to get into here. I reviewed a game called Days Gone. And uh, it, I gotta talk about this for a moment here, because I've never had to, a chance to, to follow up with it. And I, I did my review, I played the hell out of the game, and I, and I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. I thought it was really, really great. And I put up my review, and I just gotta talk about this, that so many people were coming in, and I was away on vacation at the time, and everybody's like, oh my god, great review, I know IGN, you know, hated this game, but you love it, and we trust you, and all this, and I'm like, what's going on? IGN hated this game? Really? And I couldn't understand it because what I had played the entire game, I was like, why, why didn't they like it? So I went in and watched the review and I, I, I really disagreed with the review. So I was really nervous. I'm like, oh my God. Like you start getting nervous when you have an a game before embargo and you're the only one playing it. And you're not talking to anybody else because it's under embargo. And so you're making your own decisions and you're going on your gut feeling. And I went on my gut feeling. I really, I played enough video games. I know, I like to think I know what I'm talking about. And I felt very strongly by my, you know, about my review and I still stand behind it. But I was like, what did everybody else think of this game? So thank God I, I went and checked out Vix, uh, Victor Lucas, my friend, uh, to see what he rated the game. And he loved the game. I think he gave it like a nine out of 10. I was like, yay, you know, like uh, I'm not alone in this. And I checked out my friend JKB, Jay Hooped, to see what he said and he loved the game as well. I was like, oh good. And, the game had some very mixed reactions to it. And I, I think it's a wonderful open world, you know, zombie thon, shoot 'em up style of game. Kind of go anywhere, do anything you want to do in any order you want to do it in. I think it's great. Anyways, that leads us to some stuff here. And they sent me, uh, the PR team there sent me this. Days gone, I, they sent me a t-shirt. And I just love this. And they sent me, me and Kim a shirt and I was like, that's pretty cool. And oh, you'll, you'll like this. <laughs> they sent me a bandana. They sent me a bandana. And let's... I haven't worn a bandana. Oh, you want it. I'm going to do it for a second here. Oh my... I haven't... Oh my god, I haven't worn a bandana for years. <laughs> I look like a pirate now. What's going on? So, I, I just want to thank the, the PR uh, team for sending me out that. And a hat. Oh, look at this. Now I'm really... I'm really doing it up now. Uh, for sending me this stuff out. I really appreciated it. And uh, yeah, I, I, oh my God, I can't get over the bandana. So dumb. And even Sony sent me a, a press kit out. They were really trying to, um, I'd reviewed the game, then all of this stuff showed up, so it didn't influence my review. Getting a couple of shirts and hats don't influence a review for me, that's for sure. But because I liked the game, they were such bonuses for me. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I, I really can relate that, to that. That's really awesome. Um, but yeah, so uh, Days Gone is one that I came back from my vacation and I started playing again because I was like, I really, really get a kick out of the game. Okay, next up, this is um, different for me to do. Um, but I wanted to definitely mention it. A company got in touch with me and they're like, they were called Zen Plus. And I just want to say this much. So many companies get in touch with me every single week for one purpose or another of something they want to promote. And I'm like, I always say no. I, I always say no because it's not, it doesn't make sense for me or the show. But this kind of did make sense to me. So this company wrote to me and they said, listen, we know that you like SNK Neo Geo. And I was like, okay, they've done some research into me. I, I definitely do like these things. And we have this service where we are promoting uh, this uh, side of our uh, store that promotes SNK Neo Geo stuff. Would you like to test the service out? And I'm like, well, what is this service? And I'm always very, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm never really trustworthy of things. I, I have to test it out, you know, and I don't want to talk about it unless I've tested it out. So I'm like, what is it about? So what it is, you get to browse all of their stuff. And I started looking at it and I was like, I have never seen Neo Geo merch like this. And this is Japan only stuff. I'm, like, I'm going through all the stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is really neat. And so you pick stuff that you like and you order, they, they order it to their warehouse. And then I was just like, I don't trust this stuff, right? And then, They'll send, they package it all up, 
They charge you for the shipping, obviously, and for all the merch, and send it to you. So it's a, it's a third party proxy site. And I was like, okay, they're like, do you want to test the service out? I'm like, okay, I'll test it out because I like, I'd seen a few things that I was like really interested in. So I'm going to show these things here. I'm a huge Geese Howard fan from the, you know, obviously Fatal Fury. And I got this. This is so, this is the craziest sweatshirt I've ever seen. Look at this. This is the back of the sweatshirt. SNK, New, you know, Fatal Fury, Geese Howard, and then the sides, and then even the front of this thing. I was like, I'm actually gonna put this thing on right now. This was the most craziest sweatshirt I've ever seen. And I was like, this is pretty cool. I was like, this is pretty cool. And then they're like, okay, what else do you want? And I was like, so I'm just picking and choosing. I'm like, this is great. This is probably, as you know, the King of Fighters 94 is one of my favorite uh, Neo Geo games, fighting games. And so there's this, they sent me this, uh, the King of Fighters 94. I'm like, that's pretty good, but it's the back that's awesome. The back that is so sweet. I'm like, <laughs> so I, I started kind of putting a theme together for myself. And then I even ordered this. A Geese Howard shirt to go underneath the Geese Howard sweatshirt. I mean, I, I gotta just mention this. The reason why I was interested in all this stuff is that when I was a young kid, if you had told me that I would get older and be able to wear a Geese Howard sweatshirt, I'd be like, you know, a hoodie. I'm like, get out. And then here, here, I'm 45 years old, folks. I'm 45 and I, I got this as well. An art of fighting cap. Look at this. I'm so Neo Geo gangster here. I freaking love this stuff so much. Like an art of fighting hat. I thought that was cooler than hell. So I was sitting around with all this stuff. I'm like, this is crazy. So the one thing that I will say, I'll put a link below to Zen Plus. I tested the service out. I got all the stuff. Uh, I, so I want to say the only thing that was a little bit unusual you order the stuff, it shows you how much you pay, and it ships it to the warehouse, they package it up. You don't know the shipping at that point. There's a guesstimation on the shipping. That's not 100% accurate until it gets to the warehouse and then they're like, you know, I think for all of these uh, clothes together, it was $30 shipping, which wasn't the end of the world, and it arrived in three days. So, I gotta say, Zen Plus worked for me, and uh, I wanna thank them for reaching out and sending me some gear to test their site out and all of that, and, yeah, I tested it out. I got some gear, <laughs> some some merch that I think is really cool and makes sense for the show and especially makes sense for me. I remember when I first got all this stuff and I sent a picture to my wife of me all wearing it. I had my sunglasses on and she's like, you got to pick me up from work wearing that. <laughs> she thought it was pretty awesome. So anyways, had to mention that stuff. Now we're on to some uh, Blu-rays, uh, some really great Blu-rays that I am a, a huge fan fan of. Uh, for a lot of you who have watched the show for a long time, you know in 1985 I saw an anime uh, for my birthday on beta and I rented it. This was my birthday present was being able to rent this from a you know a local uh, video store and I watched this in the basement in the dark and that was Galaxy Express Triple Nine and I have had VHS copies, I've had DVD copies, it's finally come on Blu-ray and every birthday me and my wife always watch it. We always watch it. So I'm saving this, I know this sounds funny, I'm saving it for my birthday next January and we will watch it because it is a thing. We've been watching the DVD for probably the last eight-ish years together. Uh, we, I started watching it with her, I you know, first showed her to her uh, ever since the DVD was out because I had a co an AVI copy before that. Anyways, so I got the Blu-ray, happy to get that. Discotheque? Um, I, they took some time bringing it out. The problem with this Kitek uh, for me is they always release the DVD and then finally, uh, like a year later, they release the Blu-ray, so it's a bit of a double dip, but what have you. This next box set brought a small tear to my eye and I, I've wanted to get this for a long time. And uh, as you know, I've had the King of Smut uh, on my show, the Godfather of Anime, Willem Chow, uh, a great uh, you know, old friend of mine from the old anime days. And back when I was a younger guy, he was ordering all the, the Laserdisc box sets of different things. And one of his favorite shows 
was Orange Road. And I was like, I've always wanted to see Orange Road all the way through. And I had some VHS copies of a few episodes here and there. And he ordered the DVDs, which, oh God, back in the day were super, super expensive. You know, for the entire set, you know, the American set with subtitles and all. It was something that was unobtainable for me. But, again, this is so nice. This is being brought over. Here we go. Orange Road has finally been brought to Blu-ray in the Americas here, and I've never been as thrilled. I, I watched the first episode, I think it was because I've had all this stuff for a while. I watched the first episode, oh god, must be about three weeks ago, and I had a small tear, man. I was like, this is great, and I talked to my wife, I said, we have to watch, we have to watch all of this stuff. We gotta watch all of these episodes every single night. And so she's like, oh, okay. And I, I really don't know what to expect from the entire series, but it's now that I've kind of talked about it in here, we're gonna start watching it. And so great to have Orange Road on Blu-ray. It looks stunning. It looks really nice from a show that was from 1987, you know, so. All right, got some more stuff to show here. This one is the biggest coincidence known to mankind. I can't believe sometimes how life works. It's really, really weird. I have been interested in starting up playing Dungeons and Dragons again with my friends and I've started to get together a group. I've made a list of a, a group of names that I think will work really well together. People, you know, I, I think we're gonna create an unbelievable party. And I'm gonna DM this. So about, oh God, it must be about five months ago, I started to read online, I, I downloaded it. Uh, a module called uh, The Sinister Secret of uh, Salt Marsh. And I was like, it's an old Dungeons and Dragons module. And I got my wife to print it up. And I was like, I'm going to convert this to 5th edition. I, this is my print up job. This is from, uh, God, months and months ago. And so I start to read it. I'm like, this is going to be the very first adventure that I put the party on. Because I, I, I just like the idea. It's pirates. And it's the ocean. And it's like intrigue. And... It, there's a lot of mystery there. It's kind of one of those style things and double crosses. There's a lot of really good twists and turns for a DM to put the party through. And so I, I got the old TSR version and then this is weird. All of a sudden I was sent an email. I was on some PR list and they're like, oh, uh, the ghost of Salt Marsh is coming out uh, by Wizards of the Coast. And as you know, I, I, I collect all the Wizards of the Coast uh, books. I'm a huge fan of them. I obviously I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons fan, and I'm like, oh my god, they're bringing out that old module for fifth edition. What a coincidence! I realized I could respond to the email, so I, I wrote to the PR person. I said, is it possible to get a review copy? They're like, oh yeah, well, just send me your address. Unbelievable! They sent me this early. I can't believe it. The Ghost of Saltmarsh, the fifth edition you know, kind of uh, representation of that old module. And I'm like, is this for real? I'll just kind of flip a little bit here. Uh, some really nice artwork on it. It has a lot of uh, like ship battling and ship exploration in here. That's kind of what makes this a, a unique adventure. There's pirates in it, all that kinds of stuff. All the kinds of stuff that for me in Dungeons and Dragons, that's how I want to start up again. And they sent me also a version with an alternative cover. And I've never been sent anything from Wizards of the Coast. So I was super thrilled. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, not only is it like the first thing I get from Wizards of the Coast, but it's also the first module I was going to do for my party members. I'm like, what a coincidence. So that was really, really awesome. Now, next up, I was on vacation for a little bit of time and I walked into a, a bookstore and I saw this book and I hadn't seen it in Vancouver here at all. And, oh God, you know with me, I'm a huge fan of Amano. And this is another art book of his. And oh my God, look at, look at this stuff. This is for anybody who doesn't know, uh, the character designer of uh, Final Fantasy, classic Final Fantasy. But he's also uh, the character designer of uh, Vampire Hunter D, also of Gotchamon and of Mospira, uh, for sure. So. He, this guy is a beautiful, fine artist, and I'm, I, I know a lot of you maybe do, do know or don't know, but I, I'm a big artist, and I really, I really adore his work, because there's a lot, look at this, 
he does a lot of abstract work and he does a lot of really, really, uh, you know, detailed uh, drawings as well. And, but yeah, he'll, you know, he'll just draw a picture of some fruit and, and stuff like that. He's a, he's a true, true artist and somebody who I really admire so much and I have admired over the years. I, I'm really lucky that I have one of his art books with an original sketch by him. That's in the other room. I'm like, maybe you've seen that before on the show. And, uh, I'm a big fan of his. And so I feel I also have the Sky Collection in the other room as well that I've, I fulfilled my Amano art thing. And I, I've been studying his work, this book. I've been studying it for the last two weeks. I look at it all the time and just a huge amount of inspiration uh, comes from his work. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a fan, you might say. So guys, that's just some of the new game stuff that I want to show for this month. Uh, a lot of really unique items and I, I hope you got a kick out of the episode. So anyways, guys, until next time.